In this lesson, we are going to introduce you to the concept of pressure. These are the learner's outcome. What is the difference between pressure and force? They seem to be quite similar. The formula for pressure is force over area. So uh, pressure and force are slightly different, though they are related. The SI unit for pressure is Pascal. Contrasted with the SI unit for pressure is Newton. The base unit is actually Newton per meter, okay, Newton, and area is meter square. So that's how it comes about. And one Pascal is equivalent to one Newton of force exerted on an area of one meter square. So it is something you have one Newton of force, and if you exert one meter by one meter. Some other common units for pressure, mmHg or millimeters of mercury, Hg. This is the sim chemical symbol for mercury. It's used for measuring atmospheric pressure or blood pressure. If you have a blood pressure device, you notice that you have this unit over here, mmHg. Or it could be a PSI or pound per square inch. It's used to measure uh, tire pressure. So you see that this PSI over here, so 32 PSI is a uh, pound per square inch. So based on this formula, pressure is dependent on two factors, force and area. So if you have a larger force, you find that you have a larger pressure. So this is natural. So if your force goes up, pressure also goes up. And if, of course, if your force goes down, your pressure goes down. The other way is that if you have a larger area, you find that instead of having a larger pressure, you have a smaller pressure instead because area is in the de denominator portion. So if this goes bigger, you find that pressure also goes bigger, uh, smaller. Opposite also applies. If the area goes smaller, pressure goes bigger. Okay, a simple way to remember, pressure can be thought of force distributed over a contact area. So you have a force and then you have an area that of contact. Okay, this is the area. If the contact area becomes bigger, you can think of it as in the force is being spread out over a wider area. So the pressure exerted on this area is actually lesser. Okay, so you have a same force, but you spread out over a wider area, you, you, you di dilute that. So in that sense, the pressure is being spread out. So pressure exerted will be smaller. What if the contact area becomes smaller? So one way to think of it is that the force will be concentrated Okay, concentrated in that small area and so you can think of it as in the pressure becomes bigger okay so you have the same force but it's being concentrated so the pressure is actually bigger what are the features of an object that cut things easily hard materials such as metal and rock since well knives are made out of metal what about soft object can you make soft object cut through things have you gotten paper cuts before? Or wooden splinter that is able to poke into your fingers? Why? Uh, are paper or wood are very hard kind of materials? Or maybe it's because they have actually have sharp edges. Now that could be a reason. So let's just think, why is it that sharp object cut things easily? But it seems like a silly question. Because if sharp objects don't cut things easily, they are really not sharp. So how do we actually define objects being sharp by just looking at them? So look, let's look at these two shapes and decide which is sharper. I'm sure you have easily made your decision. Most of us would think that the triangle shape is the sharper object. But again, why? Because we usually associate sharp with pointy edges and it is these pointy edges that uh, makes it cut things easily. But have you think about what is the feature that sharp pointy edge can cut through things easily? Actually, it is because it has a small contact area. With a small contact area, only a small force is needed to produce enough high pressure to puncture through surface. What do you mean by small area? Meaning that the contact area over here is very small as compared to a blunt object. So you find that the contact area over here is uh, generally bigger okay so this area is big so using this 
small contact area, puncturing the surface means to cut, cut into an object. And though a paper is not a very strong material, it can cause cuts onto your uh, finger using its sharp edge, using its small edge over here. Okay, because there's a very small contact area between the edge and your skin. Uh, likewise, a blunt pair of scissors have a lot of difficulty cutting two things because it has a much larger uh, contact area. The pressure that is exerted uh, is relatively smaller than a sharp pair of scissors. And again, sharp pair of scissors means that there's a small area of contact. So spreading out the forces over a wide area means lower pressure. Let's look at the following picture of a man lying on a sharp bit of sharp nails. Okay, each other are sharp. We find that though it's dangerous for a person to lie on a single sharp nail sticking up, uh, it's possible for the person to lie on a bit of nails safely. Why? It's because there are many, many, con uh, even though each of the nail has a small point of contact, but there are many, many nails that's actually supporting the weight of this person. So the total area of contact is actually pretty big. You can even do it with a balloon. So over here you see that there's this uh, balloon that's supposedly fragile, but then yet you can press the balloon into a bit of nails and yet the balloon doesn't burst. Okay, uh, there's videos on it on the net, so do look for them. But however, do not try this at home. If you are given a choice of being stomped or stepped upon by an adult elephant or a woman with high heel shoes, which one will you choose? Seems to be pretty obvious, isn't it? Uh, most likely you will choose women with high heel shoes. Let's calculate the pressure that's exerted by them. So you have this elephant that is stepping on this person. And assuming that elephant has a mass of 5,400 kg and has a single foot size of roughly about 40 by 40 cm. Of course the elephant has a round feet, but well, let's just make an assumption that's square for ease of calculation. So pressure exerted by elephant is force exerted over contact area. And the force exerted in this case, let's just assume that it's the weight of the elephant that is pressing down. So weight is equal to mg and the area is uh, the feet. So in this case, just substitute in the value and notice that the area has to be in meter square. This is in centimeter. So therefore, uh, 0 .4, uh, 40 centimeter is actually 0 0.4 meter. So it is roughly about 300 over uh, Pascal. Okay, seems quite high. So let's just remember it's about 350 Pascal, uh, 350,000 Pascal. So women in high heels, assuming that the mass of the woman is roughly of 50 kilogram, and the heels that she's wearing is about one centimeter by one centimeter. Okay, one centimeter by one centimeter. So the pressure exerted, we do the same calculation. It is a force over contact area, and also equals the weight. Again, one centimeter is actually equal to 0 0.001 meter, so therefore you have to convert it uh, accordingly. And the result is actually 5 million pascal, which is much, much more than the weight of elephant, uh, the pressure exerted, which is about 350,000. Uh, 350, so the pressure exerted is much higher than an elephant. Does that surprise you? Look at the picture of a s snowshoe. You find that, can you explain the feature of a snowshoe that enable people to walk on thick layer of snow? You find that it is the opposite of heels. By increasing the contact area, the pressure while walking on the snow is actually reduced. And thus, this enables people to walk in deep snow as they want to sink too much into the snow. Okay, that's the end of today's lesson. Please subscribe and support my channel. For my other physics video lesson arranged according to topics, please visit my blog at boringphysicsteachers.wordpress.com. You can subscribe to my channel to be informed when I upload new physics video lessons. Thank you.